uh, welcome to the this session on Indian legal system. Uh, Indian legal system is a very vast system and today we will be discussing about the constitution of India. Uh, a constitution you know we can say it is, it is a social document as it contains the aspirations and cultures of the people. But constitution is also a legal document by virtue of being a code to be followed by everyone who resides in a particular country. Constitution lays down in which the country, in which way the country is governed and is often referred to as supreme law of land. So, constitution of India basically lays down the basic principles to be followed in the matters of executive, legislative, judicial in the country. The constitution puts limit on the powers of government and guarantees certain rights to the people. Now, Indian constitution if we talk about it comes into effect on 26th January 1950. It holds the distinction of being one of the lengthiest constitution in the world. Now, when we are in this session, we will be discussing, we will discuss the making of Indian constitution. We will also try to provide insight into salient features of Indian constitution. So, what are the basic features of Indian constitution? We will be discussing throughout the video. Now, let us come to the drafting of Indian constitution. Uh, a very brief uh, discussion we will do about how the constitution is drafted. Uh, the process of evolution of constitution if we talk about it begins in, begin in the year 1895 when you know, freedom fighters like Annie Besant, Lok Manya Tilak, they have put forward a document called constitution of India bill, which is also known as a home rule bill envisaging freedom of expression and equality before law. Now, in February 1924, Motilal Nehru introduced and passed a resolution outlining the procedure and drafting and adopting a constitution for India in the Central Legislative Assembly. And the committee under the chairmanship of Motilal Nehru to determine the principles of constitution of India was appointed in 1928. Uh, which submitted its report on 10th August and they recommended equal rights to men and women regardless of caste, class, religion or region, free elementary education, freedom of expression to all. The constituent assembly as per the scheme which is recommended by the cabinet mission, it consisted of indirectly elected representatives of the provisional legislative assemblies. Initially, total membership of the assembly was 389 out of which 292 members were elected through the provincial legislative assemblies. 93 members, they represent the Indian princely states and the 4 members represent the chief commissioners provinces. But due to constraint of separate constituent assembly for Pakistan as a result of partition under the Mountbatten plan of 3rd June 1947. The representative of some provinces ceased to be the member of the assembly and the membership of the assembly was then reduced to 299. The constituent assembly as per the scheme which is recommended by cabinet mission consisted of indirectly elected representatives of provincial legislative assemblies. Initially total membership of the assembly was 389 and 298 members were elected to provincial legislative assembly as we have discussed. Uh, but the sources, if we talk about Indian constitution when it is drafted, the constituent assembly while drafting the Indian constitution relied upon the few sources. Now, first source is Government of India Act of 1935. Now, this Government of India Act is actually basically very important. Uh, the act was passed by British parliament and it remained in force until 1950 when the Indian constitution was adopted. Uh, the act introduced provisional autonomy and proposed to form an all India federation. So, act basically at that time when this act was drafted and it uh, came in 1935. So, it uh, introduced the concept of pro uh, provincial autonomy and proposed for all India federation and all the provinces were to be the member of that federation. Uh, the salient features, it is very important to know the salient feature of this act though uh, because it is the main source of constitution, uh, the present constitution. So, uh, this act of 1935, it provided for parliamentary system, but the ultimate power was kept with the British. It included a wide range of 
administrative aspects for the structure of government, it created a centralized federal system and it provided for election to provincial legislatures or assemblies. The act divided the subjects into three lists, uh, federal, uh, provincial, concurrent list. Now, this list still ex exists in other form like union or a current or a concurrent list. So, at that time the act divides the subjects into three lists, federal, provincial and concurrent list. The provinces were given autonomy with respect to subjects delegated to them. The provisions were also made for residuary subjects to be looked after by the governor general. So, a federal court consisting of one chief justice and more than six judges and federal public service commission was established by the 1935 act. Second source of the constitution is you know the constitution of other countries. So, different parts of Indian constitutions are borrowed from the constitution of other countries. For example, first the British constitution was used and what are the features which are adopted from the British constitution were uh, parliamentary form of government, bicameral parliament, cabinet system of ministers, speaker in Lok Sabha, single citizenship, the rule of law, law making procedures, procedures established by law and prerogative rights. So, the, uh, the basic form which we say is India is a parliamentary form of a government that is taken from the British constitution. Uh, and even the cabinet system of ministers and speakers in Lok Sabha, this is borrowed from British constitution. Uh, apart from British constitution, Irish constitution was also referred to, which contains the you know directive principles of state policy, which is you know the mandates on a state that they have to do certain uh, you know uh, certain acts, which is in the interest of the society. So, directive principles of principles of state policy, uh, method of election of president, how the president can be elected, uh, nom how the members in the Rajya Sabha can be nominated. So, nomination of members in the Rajya Sabha by the president, the all the procedures have been adopted from the Irish constitution. Then is United States of the United States constitution. Uh, the feature which is adopted from uh, United States is you know federal structure of government. So, federal is basically division of power between the union and state. So, federal structure of a government, uh, the due process of law, power of judicial review, independence of judiciary, fundamental rights, president as a supreme commander of armed forces, removal of president, judges of supreme court and high courts. So, the basic features of how the process is to be followed due process of law and the power of judicial review which is uh, you know uh, which is exercised by the judiciary and uh, the concept of that the in judiciary is in should has to work independently and what are the fundamental rights the basic rights which were given to the citizens of India and which should not be violated. This has been borrowed from United States constitution. Then Canadian constitution was also referred to which provides for the basic features which is adopted from Canadian constitution is a quasi federal form of government, distribution of powers between center and states and placing residuary powers with the center. So, it provides for you know uh, we will also discuss how the federal structure is and how the India is a quasi federal or a federal because we are saying it is a federal structure of a government from United States, but a quasi federal form of a government from a Canadian constitution where the distribution of power is between center and state and placing the residuary powers with the center. Then Australian constitution, uh, the provisions of trade and commerce between different states of country, the power of national legislature to make laws for implementing treaties, concurrent list, this is taken from the Australian constitution. Now, French constitution was also referred to and from there the features which were adopted was ideal of liberty, equality and fraternity. Japan constitution gave us a fundamental duties, the concept of fundamental duties, USSR, Russia, a five year plan, uh, then Weimar constitution emergency provisions. So, in this way the constitution of various countries become the secondary source of constitution of India. The third source is the objective resolution which is drafted by 
Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru laying down the philosophy behind the constitution and expressed through its various provisions. On 13 December 1946, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru moved the objective resolution. The constitution drives its spirit from this source. The objective resolution called for integrity of Indian Union and that its authority and powers were de derived from Indian people. So, it states that all the people should be secured with regard to justice, social, economic and political. So, basically uh, we can say constitution spirit is derived from this source because it is providing for the people, it is securing to its people the justice or social, economic or political. So, equality of status of opportunity and before the law, equality before the law, the freedom of thought, expression, belief, faith, worship, vocation, association and action subject however to the law and public morality. So, furthermore the objective resolution provided for adequate safeguard for minorities also, the depressed and backward classes and underdeveloped and tribal areas. So, it is taking the holistic view where the no person, person of any caste and creed there is no uh, discrimination on that ground. The objective resolution can be summarized to consist of three independent cell, inter interdependent we can say salient features, protecting and enhancing national unity and integrity, establishing the institution and spirit of democracy, promoting a social revolution for betterment of the citizens. So, the preamble of the constitution which we read today is says, we the people of India have solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. In our constituent assembly this 26th day of November 1949 to hereby adopt an act and give to ourselves this constitution. So, this is the preamble of the constitution which is beautifully worded in such a way that all the basic philosophy, basic structure is incorporated in the preamble of the constitution. Now, salient features of the constitution of India is first of all it is a written constitution. It is the longest written constitution consisting of 395 articles and 12 schedules. It reflects ideology of nation and a supreme law of land. Indian constitution is by and large federal in nature. So, article 1 of the constitution of India lays down that India that is Bharat shall be union of states. The term federation though has not been used but the government is federal because it consists of features of federal state like two sets of government and distribution of power between the two. That is the power is distributed between the union and the state government. The union government is vested with significant powers like defense, finance, heavy industries and so on. But during the emergency time, the Indian governance turns into unitary form. Hence, some legal scholars refer Indian constitution as a quasi-federal constitution. It is a democratic republic. So, Indian constitution it's in its preamble declares India as a democratic republic. That is the sovereignty rest with the people of India and they govern themselves through their respectives elected on the basis of universal adult franchise. That is representatives are elected on the basis of universal adult franchise. Now, secular state, it provides for secular state which is neutral in matters of religion and is neither religious nor irreligious or anti-religious. The state maintain equal distance from all religions and allows people to follow whatever religion they like or even not to follow any religion. India is also a pluralist country. So, having people belong to several ethnicities, color, caste, language. So, Indian constitution accommodates and treasures people from any background 
and treats everyone equally. It provides freedom of religion, freedom of speech and expression, freedom of association and peaceful assembly. Eradication of inequality, non-discrimination on the ground of caste, sex, language, religion and culture. So, right to constitutional remedies is also provided for the protection of civil rights. Further, the main Indian governors is or Indian governance system is divided into three organs, namely legislation, which is law making, executive enforces and administers the law, and judicial reviews and judiciary, which reviews and interprets the law. The power of governors are balanced and distributed between these organs to ensure that no organ becomes supreme. So, this also leads to what is known as check and balances. In India, the legislative power is vested in the Union Parliament and state assemblies. The executive power is vested in president and the state governors and the judicial power is vested in supreme court and high courts. Now, there is a concept of Indian independent judiciary. So, judges are appointed on the basis of qualification and experience and the removal of judges is though not an easy, but it, in cases of misconduct, uh, the judges can also be removed. The order of the courts are to be followed sincerely by other branches. Hence, the judiciary is independent and protects the constitutional values. A judicial review entails the law which is made by legislator and executive can be questioned before the judiciary. The judiciary has the power to review these laws. If the laws are found to be against the constitutional values, then such laws can be declared as unconstitutional by higher court. So, the constitution provides also provides for fundamental rights and protection of civil liberties, directive principles of state policy. It ensures supremacy of the people of the country. Uh, fundamental rights are ensured in part 3 and any and they are enforceable in court of law. So, a grieved person can directly move to the supreme court or to the high court under the relevant provisions. And, but the directive principles on the other hand though they are not enforceable by any court, but they are also fundamental in governance of the country. So, it is a duty of the state to apply these principles in making law and there are also the fundamental duties which is expected to be performed by citizens given under article 51 a of the constitution. So, the constitution also provides for provision to national civil services, language, elections, finance, trade and commerce unlike some other countries. Now, in India citizenship is based on nationality and not the state. So, further the constitution provides for one citizenship that is Indian. So, Indian constitution we can say is partly rigid and also partly flexible as the parliament has power to amend the constitution and procedure by way of addition, variation or repeal of any provisions of the constitution in accordance with the procedure laid down in article 368 of the constitution. Now, if we look into amendment of the constitution, uh, you know for that uh, the bill has to be introduced in either house of the parliament and there are basically three ways where when the most provisions you know they can be amended by the union parliament by passing an amending act by majority of total membership and a two third majority of members present and voting in each house. But some provision of the constitution can be amended by passing of the amendment bill by two third majority of the members of each of the two houses of parliament. And then it becomes finally passed when approved by at least half of the state legislatures. Uh, some provisions can be amended by parliament by way of a simple majority of two houses. Uh, the signature of the president is required as the final act which transforms a duly enacted amendment bill into an amendment act. So, state legislatures have been denied to denied the power to initiate the amendments. All amendments are subject to judicial review power of courts, the supreme court and state high courts only or any amendment as a whole can be declared invalid by a court if it is found to be unconstitutional. So, doctrine of basic structure provides for limitation on the amending power of parliament. In Keshav Nanda Bharti was a state of Kerala, the supreme court has evolved the concept of basic structure. The concept aims at restraining the amending powers of parliament. It states that the parliament cannot alter the basic structure of the constitution that includes several principles like democracy, federalism, secularism, free and fair elections. The amendment methods has helped the constitution however, to change in response to the changing needs of the society and polity. So, we can conclude we, uh, that the constitution of India is supreme law of land. The document lays down the framework 
that demarcates fundamental political code, procedures, powers and duties of a government institutions. It also sets out fundamental rights, debt to principles of state policy and also the fundamental duties of the citizens. The constitution declares India a sovereign, socialist, secular and democratic republic, assures its citizens justice, equality and liberty and endeavors to promote the fraternity. Thank you.